Alright folks, welcome back to the Gen X Gamer. I am Karak Alvaron and today we are in Steam. Today we have a major update for Valheim. This is the Hilder's Request update. This is not the Ashlands update. This is um, the Hilder's Request. She is a new trader on the in Valheim. You can do some quests with her, etc. And in this video, I'm going to go over the patch notes in detail, give you my two cents worth on what they mean, etc. So before I get going, let me say thank you. Thank you for taking your time to watch my content. I really appreciate it. Please remember to like, subscribe, share. All that stuff really helps the channel out, and I appreciate the support. So I am making this as of August 22nd, Tuesday. This just came out. Um... This update was anticipated. Most people knew this was coming. It's been on the test server for a while. This is the update that has Hilder, which is a new NPC character in the game. It also has um, the modifiers for your server playthroughs. You can make them hardcore. You can make them uh, no events, etc. And we'll get into all of that. Um, I haven't gone in and tested yet m many of these. I will on my own time. Uh, I will say that a lot of the seeds that I do, the, the uh, seed uh, discovery videos that I do on the channel, um, most of those could change. So just quickly before we get into the patch notes, what happens is, is whenever Valheim does a major update, and this is a major update in my opinion, um, it affects where some of the bosses are placed on the map. Okay, and so if you had a seed... Um, that you discovered six months ago and the bosses were in an XYZ location and a maypole was here etc that could change however if you started that seed and saved it in your cloud save files at that time it would save that seed exactly how you started it and then the Hilder or whatever is just placed in there randomly so as an example, if, if I did a seed discovery video last week and the maypole was ex located in X spot, you started that seed, you started a game with that seed, that maypole will still be there. If I did a seed, that same seed though, if you didn't start a new uh, playthrough with that, this, the maypole may be there or may not be. You'd have to go back into the map and check it. Anyways, on to patch 0. 0.217.14 Hilder's request. So let's we'll read the first part. The time has come for all those who have stocked up on gold from troll caves and fueling villages. Said gold is the primary currency in the world of Valheim after all, and there's a new vendor in the tenth realm where you can spend your riches. Good, because uh Halder had very little to buy. For as you know, Haldor or Halder is not the only merchant in the family. His sister Hildur has made her way to Valheim at last, but she has had some trouble on the way, and it appears most of her stock has gone missing. When you find her, she might request some help. By completing the task she has for you, you will unlock more things to buy from her, both new clothing as well as some other items that may come in handy in your base. This update also brings some long-awaited server modifiers. Select a lower difficulty for a more casual experience, ramp it up for a hardcore playthrough, or come up with a mix of your own besides general difficulty. You will find settings for portals, resources, raids, and more, all so that you can customize your experience to your Viking's heart, heart's content. Um, so that's really the two major... Uh, updates here for this you're going to get we get a new npc hilder and we get quests with her now obviously you go finish the quest you come back to her she has more things to sell right so you're inclined to do more and more and more of the quests that she wants now uh, a little bit of a spoiler here uh, they're not all very easy meaning you have to go to progressively higher and higher tiers um, you know, one's in uh, the dark forest, next one's maybe in the mountains or or the swamp, next one's in the plains. I mean, they're not all going to be 
you could just do them uh, when you spawn in just so you know and also you can change the settings from for your uh, for each particular save game that you have um, for each seed now I have looked at that a little bit it's actually pretty cool you can turn um, invasions off you can set the difficulty levels I think everyone's gonna have a lot of fun with that because there's a lot of us that have been playing Valheim for a long time and it's uh, looking for something new is definitely cool so let's get to the abbreviated patch notes which I just went over new locations okay that's I'm pretty sure that has to do with her world modifiers to crafting extensions I'm not sure what that is new hair and beard styles and some new items um, miscellaneous hair and beards are now visible when equipping helmets cool um, some visual improvements quick stack button added that's nice so you can just run by your your um, storage units and just stack things manually snapping for building added that's really cool all right new content um, you're gonna we're gonna get Hilder and we're gonna get Hilder's camp um, so here are the new locations I apologize there actually are new locations the smoldering tomb which is a dungeon the new uh, howling cavern which is a dungeon Sealed Tower, an open dungeon. So one's cla two of these are classics, and one of them is open. I'm not sure what the difference is there. And there's three mini bosses. Those all pertain to the Hilder quests, by the way. Um, so that's the new content. They basically, and again, there's spoilers here. So you know, proceed with caution if you don't want to hear them. Um, Hilder, I believe, has three quests that you do, and each one of them, you go to these to these new locations, these tombs, these dungeons. Um, you defeat the mini boss there, which you bring. I think there's a drop that you bring back to Hilder, and it opens up that merchant, uh, that particular level of merchandise that she would have to sell you now i'm not sure what every what, what all of those items are it's probably in here in the patch notes we're not going to go through and itemize every little thing here um but the bottom line is is we have something new to do we've got hilder's quests we could do those um we've got some new places to explore so that's pretty cool um, i'm not sure if these are going to appear on the new the map generator so when i do my seed discovery videos we cover everything in depth we go through um, where the trader is located if the, if hilder appears on that we will do that that will be included in those and we'll also find the smoldering tomb the howling cavern the sealed tower if they're there and the mini bosses etc so stay tuned for that uh, world modifiers button added to start game screen with many customization difficulty options select a preset or design your own um, I've taken oh, I've taken oh, come on I've taken a look at this that's pretty cool it's very intuitive it's very straightforward you'll understand exactly what each one of the modifiers does and so that's cool there's no ambiguity right like oh you know if I click over one spot one click to the right does that mean that it's going to be a little bit harder no it's very straightforward it's very intuitive they did a very good job here with that what else we got uh eight different fireworks added including thunderstone and black core thrown into the fire okay fireworks are cool um got a new item sparkler okay um some new clothing 10 hats and head scarves and 14 dresses and tunics okay Black Forge got an extension, uh, so upgrades to level three. The, the Mage Table uh, upgrades to level three. Okay, so that's cool for for end game. Uh, we got a Barber's Kit, a Barber Station. That's pretty cool. So now you're gonna be able to change your your uh, hairstyle and beer style at that Barber Station. That's pretty cool. Um, we got an Iron Pit and a Fire Pit. That's interesting. Um, I wonder if the fire pit gives us plus one comfort, if it's stackable, or if it's a single plus one comfort. Because fire is not currently stackable. You can't have a fireplace and uh, um, the larger one. I can't remember what it's called. And they don't. The comfort doesn't stack. You get one or the other. 
Anyways, uh, eight new hairstyles, five new beard styles, four new music tracks. Okay. Um, that's, that's nice little content. That's a nice little update. Now, one of the things that is, is really, really cool about Valheim is this coffee stain does these updates and we're not being charged. Now, in a lot of games, what happens is, is when you get a big update, they, it's like a DLC, right? They want some money back. This isn't DLC level content, meaning you, we're getting some new stuff, but there's not a lot. If they were monetizing this game traditionally, like other games, what they would have done is, is they would have held this and then they would have added it into the Ashlands release that they're probably going to do in the fourth quarter and then do a full DLC release and charge like 20 bucks for it. Okay, that's kind of, that's. This is pretty close to what they did last year with Mistlands. They did a little content release before Mistlands. I think it was the Frost Caves, and then they did the Mistlands. They don't char they're not charging anybody for that, which is really, really pretty cool. I'm surprised they haven't monetized it more. I don't. I know when they first came out with the game, they said they weren't going to do that, but nobody expected this game to be as popular as it is, and I, I thought for certain by now that they. Even their publisher would say, "Hey, you know, you gotta you gotta charge at least ten bucks for these the these uh, new zones, right?" I think that's reasonable. If they said, "Hey, you know, it's nine ninety nine, ten twelve bucks for you know the Mistlands update," I, most of us would have done it, but they're not doing that. Fixes and improvements. We're not going to go through every single one here because there's a lot. The major bulk of this is is the new content which is pretty material you know the hilder's quest that that's you know three new locations the mini bosses and the difficulty slider that's the bulk of this update that's the most important thing that's you know m most welcome thank you coffee stain the fixes and improvements i mean Smoke balls created by fires now have random rotation and no longer pop in when spawned i mean you know, these are all, like, kind of nice, you know. I, are they really uh, hugely important to you, the viewer, or to me, the uh, presenter? Probably not. I mean, if you want to go through the fixes and improvements, that's cool. What I will say is, as I did look through them, there's they've, they've tried to do a lot of, um, for lack of a better term, um, enhancements, lag improvements, um, rounding of you know uh just basically trying to make it a little bit more um friendlier because there is some points where you get lag spikes in in valheim and it you know that they, they can suck <laughs> especially if you're in a dungeon which is which has happened to me before i know that i've i've read some of the um discords out there where, where they've you know they've got fairly good size um servers and people are playing together and i guess it gets can get pretty bad particularly with all the mods you know you gotta understand this is for valheim vanilla but then people are layering on 10 sometimes 20 different mods on top of it you can get pretty bogged down in valheim i'm currently just playing vanilla myself i don't know if i'm gonna go back to modded or not i don't think so there was a time though when i went deep into mods and it was a blast to play don't get me wrong but um performance definitely suffered and i think that's what a lot of the fixes and improvements here are able to uh are tr they're trying to address you know you've got fixed vegetation shader issue fixed a threading issue the game quits a bit faster as a result um fixed missing special characters on signs uh, glowing signs, fixed flickering colors when placing beach sapling. Um, menu usage is now blocked when HUD is hidden. I mean, you know, fixed for riding skill, not improving. Uh, just a lot of things, you know, new optimized low vegetation quality setting will have a small amount of grass rather than none. Um, the bug fixes and improvements you would expect with any update. They threw in as many of the little fixes as they possibly could. Quality of life. Okay, Th this is more material for your playthrough. These are the things that you're really going to notice. So, 
Quick Stack button to quickly place all items already in a container from your inventory. It can also be done by simply holding the key when interacting with a container. That's pretty big. So you don't have to manually drag everything. That's a really nice quality of life. You can now manually choose snapping points with Q and E for precision building. That's really big for builders. That's that's really, really big. Entry Intro sequence can now be skipped from the pause menu and the game can be paused while in the intro. Okay, cool. Workbench and Forge now get slightly increased build range when upgraded. Okay. That's good for the workbench because you can drop those to, to stop um, some spawns, which is good. Crafting Bench's build range is now cylindrical instead of spherical. Okay. Precision placement of build pieces changed to show when holding control... Okay, great. Added ability to copy build piece while in build mode. Okay, that's nice too. Um, Xbox, I don't have console. I know that, you know, console is fairly new to Valheim and it's been successful. I get a lot of people on my seed discovery videos asking me, dude, is this seed good for, for console? Most of them are. Most everything translates well from PC to console for this game. But Xbox is getting some specific fixes, which is cool. Um, stability. Various crash fixes related to generation of projectiles. Again, this is really just more of the fixes and improvements. Um, stability. You know, they're all, you're, you're always going to have stuff like this in any patch notes because they've they found things along the way, like fixed an issue where a world is saved twice when using manual save, doubling the amount of save time. I mean, great. Miscellaneous. God mode will now allow damage down to one health rather than taking no damage. Okay. New console command, tombstone, which creates tombstones. Cool. Tombstones can now be deleted with force delete command. Okay. New item set base and command can specify a number to override all items. Okay, that's really that's really server stuff there. New console command tombstone grease. Yep. Fix the saving of some stats. Okay, localization updated. That's nice. Yep. Fixed Asian fonts. Good. Added merch store button to the main menu. Okay, which I did notice when I went in there. So, on that, I've heard just a small bit of noise of people complaining. Okay, they're, they're introducing a cash shop. You know, th I have a couple of thoughts on that. So first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it from the player's point of view. Uh, I've got... Uh, it's a little annoying when companies throw in links to their cash shops because it's like, you know, dude, I'm already paying for the game, and in most cases I'm paying for, you know, this this DLC. And on top of that, now I've got you throwing your store in my face. I just want to play the game. You know, I've given you enough money. Coffee Stain is probably better at this than anybody else. I mean, we've gotten a lot of content from them for just the initial buy price of the game. Um, I really, really thought that they would charge us a DLC price for the Mistlands update, and I thought they would do that for the Ashlands update. I'm shocked they haven't. Um, but, you know, a merch store, it's like, okay, that has the potential to evolve into um, buying items in-game. Right now, I believe it's just you want a you know, Valheim mug or a t-shirt. And you know what? That's cool. I, I got no problem with companies trying to make money. I want to be clear. I'm a capitalist. Um, you know, I, I understand companies need to make money to continue to produce products that people want to purchase. I believe capitalism is is, is fair. Um, you know, this is, this is a leisure activity, right? This isn't life or death. It's not like it's food or shelter um, or water. We, we're spending our leisure time playing a video game and we're using our disposable income to do so. I've got no problem with that aspect of it. It's when it becomes intrusive or when it becomes like a pay-to-win thing like Arc Age became. You know, I don't ever see that happening with Coffee Stain. 
However, we now have a Merch Store button in the main menu, which is something we've never had before. So this is, you know, when people say, and I've seen this said in some discords, well, this is a gateway to a cash shop. They're technically correct. Um, does that mean we're going to get one that we're going to be, be able to buy items that we can use in game? I don't know. I haven't seen any evidence of that yet, but there is now a merch store available to you um, in the main menu. So in theory, they could sell anything on there. Now, for me personally, I think that um, I'm okay with this. I'm okay generally with um, cosmetic items being sold in uh, stores for video games. You know, I've got no problem if somebody wants to throw uh, $3.99 at a video game cash shop to get a unique uh, helmet or uh, a skin for a shield. I'm okay with that because, you know, I want these companies to continue to make money so they can produce games. I want Coffee Stain to do really well with Valheim. I want them to make plenty of money. So somewhere down the line, they're going to say, hey, you know what, let's let's do this again, and they're going to make another game, right? We want them to be prosperous. We want them to make money. We just don't want the shops to have items in it that affect the gameplay and give people who do purchase those items for real life money an artificial advantage over people who wouldn't. I want to have the same abilities in game as as the kid who can't afford to buy anything. That's fair. However, if I have five or ten bucks and I want to go spend it and get a skin that he doesn't have, you know, what's the big deal? It's not giving me any advantage. I just get a different look than he does. So that's where we're at here with the patch notes. Um, I think this was, this is, you know, obviously good. We're getting new content, which is great. Um, I think the, the new locations that in Hilder's Camp's Quest is going to be good for the community. There's a lot of people who have been at Endgame for a long time. Miss Lands has kind of run its course now from what I'm seeing. I personally have taken my very sweet time with this game. I've gone through the planes and finished it twice on two playthroughs, and that's it. I've I've dabbled in the Miss Lands. Um, like a lot of people, I've been playing this since it released. And, you know, when you've been playing a game that long, um, sometimes you wax and wane, right? I have never really burned out from Valheim, but I do a lot of content on my channel for Valheim. I do usually a Valheim video every week because that's what people want to see. Um, and, you know, you as a as a uh, YouTuber or, you know, gaming, a YouTube gaming channel, you obviously want to give your viewers what they want to see. Um, I think this is good, and it's going to tide people over until... Um, until the Ashlands releases. Now with that, Ashlands, that's the next biome that's probably going to be a big release. I don't know what else they're going to release with it. Again, as I said probably about 10 minutes ago in this presentation, most gaming companies, they get together a whole bunch of content for one DLC release and charge you like 10, 20, 30 bucks. Some cases they charge you full price, like if it's, you know, Elder Scrolls Online, which is a ripoff, but that's another video for another time. But they're not doing that here. So I would say that that, I, don't, I mean, I don't know where, where it's at. Um, I'm guessing that they're going to probably take a couple of weeks off and just enjoy this release and then um, get back to work on Ashlands if it's by, I, I would think, at Christmas time. That sounds reasonable to me because you're going to have everybody back from, you know, everyone's going to be around for Christmas vacation. They're going to be home. Um, you know, why not play some, why not do some gaming? But that's awfully close to this release. So I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked if it, if the Ashlands happens in the first quarter of next year either. And just remember with Valheim, this isn't going to go on forever. You know, they're not charging for these updates. So at some point, you know, how much time can they put in without generating more income? I think you're starting to see that now with the cash shop 
with the merch shop is what they're calling it. You know, these companies have to make money. These people have to pay rent. I'm, I'm sure they made a boatload of cash when they first sold the game. It sold millions of copies. Everybody was surprised. But, you know, a, as time marches on, you get two, three, four years in. Where does Valheim go after Ashlands? I mean, what other biome is there? There's the, the deep north. Um, after that, I mean, you're going to have to change all the maps around if you want to introduce a new biome. So I think we're getting kind of long on the tooth here. And that's a diplomatic way of saying I think Valheim is in, in, in U.S. United States football terms is probably in the um, third quarter of the game. I don't know that this is going to go on forever. I don't know how much longer they can do releases um, and not get any money back. Anyways... This is now live. When you get into Valheim next, you should see this uh, updating. And you should be able to play it, and you should, can check out the new content. Let me know what you think of the new content in the, in the uh, comments below. Uh, please feel free to comment on anything that I've said in the video. This is a, a long presentation. I do do deep dives for patch notes, um, give my two cents on the games that I play, etc. And I'd love to hear what you think about that. So thank you so much for taking your time to watch my content. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you again soon.